Good evening and welcome to another Northshire Presents virtual event. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the event manager for Northshire Bookstore in Saratoga Springs. Um, we also have a location in Manchester Center, Vermont. Thank you so much for your support of independent bookselling. We could not do events like these without the incredible loyalty and support of customers like you. Throughout the evening, if you have any questions at all, please use the Q&A box, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen to pose your questions. Um, we will save those up and pose them for you at the end of the evening. So again, you'll find that Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I'm so pleased this evening to get to be the one to introduce Pak Chok Rinpoche, as he joins us to discuss his new book, Awakening Dignity, a guide to living a life of deep fulfillment. A popular and beloved Tibetan Buddhist master with a teaching style that is at once unique, dynamic, and engaging, he is also the author of the books Radically Happy, A User's Guide to the Mind, and In the Footsteps of Bodhisattva, Bodhisattvas, Buddhist Teachings on the Essence of Meditation. He will be interviewed tonight by Kit Delorier, who in 2006 became the first person in the world to ski the seven summits, meaning she skied from the summit of the highest mountain on each of the seven continents. She is a member of the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame and is an advocate for environmental preservation, as well as the author of the book, Higher Love. She first met Rinpoche in 2007. Please join me in welcoming them to our screens this evening. Kit, as we wait for Rinpoche to be able to join us in his seat, perhaps you could talk a little bit about how you first encountered his work in 2007. Uh, yeah, it, the answer to that question actually ties into uh, what you were just talking about, climbing and skiing the Seven Summits. I was on my way to the final in my Seven Summits project, which was Mount Everest, and um, as such, I was getting current on some vaccinations and a good friend, Dr. David Schlim here in Jackson, uh, who has been a student of Buddhism for many years and used to run the Siwet Clinic in Kathmandu, and he's an international travel medicine doctor. Um, he was helping me with those vaccinations and said, oh, by the way, I'm looking for lodging for um, a visiting Rinpoche to Jackson Hole. And so, my husband and I thought that was just really um, wonderful karma that we could go to this person's home that we hadn't yet met uh, in Kathmandu and then on to Everest and offer lodging in our hometown here in Jackson, Wyoming. And so in that way, we didn't actually meet in person, but definitely exchanged um, some energy, I feel like. And then I was fortunate enough to meet him the next year when he came back to Jackson and I was pregnant with my first daughter, Grace, who's now 15. So um, every time that Rinpoche has visited Jackson, just about every time, I think, um, I've been fortunate enough to spend time with him and listen to his teachings. And, um, and some of those days has, have been like even three-day retreats. So it's, it's been a really wonderful journey and I feel incredibly fortunate to be here tonight, but to know Pak Chok Rinpoche in person. I'm just gonna um, take this moment then to say that Rinpoche translates in Tibetan to precious one. And um, that is how I will be addressing Rinpoche in reverence of, uh, as him being um, a reincarnation of a revered teacher and also in respect for truly how I feel about him. Um, he is a Lama of a high level, which translates to life force mother. So a giver of life force. And um, in therefore in this lifetime, um, it's truly hit in his nature to be nurturing and guiding to others. So you will hear me address him as Rinpoche. Rinpoche, you're muted still. Can you hear us? Oh, yes. Hello. Yes, so nice to see you. Very special opportunity. 
And you look younger than ever. I don't know how that's happening. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess I get to kick us off with some questions, unless there's something you would like to say first. I'd like to... I'd like to say welcome everybody. Mm. Mm. I have an aspiration that our question and answers can be benefit many of you to find and define um, about dignity. So can improve our compassion and understanding. So that is my aspiration. So again, welcome. Thank you. I share that aspiration. Um, I'd like to begin with something, Rinpoche, that's in the early part of the book where you ask the reader to define for themselves the concept of dignity. And to understand that the answer may change over time. In fact, is my is my takeaway that it should change over time. And um, as we understand ourselves more, I also read in that the meaning of dignity is the translation of a word. I hope I say correctly, Rai Nagal Nagal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, which is a confidence in our own innate nature or unwavering trust in our noble heart. Would you be willing to give us a definition, your definition at the moment of dignity? Mm, you can actually say journey of uh, uh, spiritual, a uh, journey of uh, finding uh, correct answer, or you can say re-recognize uh, or reconnect and understanding about dignity. Mm, I think a lot of people, wherever that is, uh, wherever you are, I can, 90%, I can guess, you have understanding of dignity and we, we understand of dignity. It's actually very much um, Mm, mix with the pride. So in a different culture and different explanation by different philosophers, mainly they are mixed with the pride and the dignity, a lot of this uh, um, connection. But my understanding of dignity is not just only for me, but our um, how you say, the healthy way of looking towards our self-understanding of dignity actually is to uh, reconnect and understanding, re-understand about our own noble heart or no, our nature, um, our nature of our body, nature of our emotion. Uh, you can call noble heart or you can say nature, is completely uncorrupted by our uh, negative action, negative behaviors. So, and if example is uh, so important uh, for human mind to understand. So my uh, example that I like to share with you, all of you is the mirror, really nice, clean, um, profound, expensive mirror mm, is a very clear to see your own face. But uh, when you don't clean up the mirror for over 10 years, then what happened is that the 10 year of dust makes the mirror a little bit more uh, unclear. So you can't see your own face. So after you put effort in five minutes, you clean up the, the mirror, putting in the right uh, amount of cleans, cleaners, cleansers. 
So you can see the mirror completely clean as before. So dignity is actually knowing our nature, core nature, our noble heart is actually like a mirror, completely clean, untouched. So re-hearing um, this um, uh, conversation, uh, re-reminding or thinking about it, having doubt about that, and uh, re uh, sort of discussion about these things is so important because that is going to make us know, experience slowly by slowly, um, inch by inch, and then step by step, we reconnect back to our noble heart or nature. It's you know like clean like a mirror. The question that you know, I like to ask with that is who created that? Who, meaning who create the mirror? Who create the nature, the noble heart? And I created or anyone created. The, the, the genuine answer that I like to give is no one created. That's why we call nature. So it's completely um, presence as a water has a um, naturally is a, a very much uh, uh, a liquid. And, uh, fire is naturally has a heat. Likewise, uh, our nature is already pure, clean. So that is as a, because of uncreated. It's already as nature. When you create it, it then is not going to be called nature. So these two important points is a very important because that makes us our nature pure, the dignity that we understand slowly by slowly in that way, then no one can steal and rob and punish of, of our dignity. You don't lose your dignity because of you, or you don't gain the dignity because of you. You already have it. It's like an innate nature. Like you already have it with a, your mind is already innate with the clarity. Mind is knowing. So likewise, our body is life means breathing. So we need to breathe as a natural way. And our mind has a clarity, you know, conscious. Conscious is clarity. So that's why it's by nature. So I think I use a lot of different examples. I think mirror is the most easy to understand. But the, all the word that I use right now, uh, someone can be a little bit difficult to understand. But you listen to a few times, then I think you can go, uh, you can go deeper and towards your understanding. Thank you. So, what I'm hearing is that although the name of the book "Awakening Dignity" is a very good one, another word could be substituted, which is "reconnecting with dignity." Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you say that our nature is pure, mm. which is true. Yet my observation about human nature is that at some point, we all question ourselves, ask ourselves questions like, am I enough? So can you say something about the concept that our nature is pure and relate it to the question, am I enough? Uh, so what is the last question? Am I enough? When people mm. question themselves mm. in whatever, in their relationships, in their workplace, in, mm. in anything. So my observation towards myself, uh, what happened is this constantly uh, journey. Uh, what happened towards us is we have, normally we ask two questions. One question is the, Mm, radiant, you know, the radiant reflection is a reflection of your own uh, pure nature. One question is actually radiant of your own ego. So the two questions normally we ask is uh, why I'm here? What is the meaning of life? Uh, what I'm doing is not too meaningful. I need to find some meaningful, this kind of the meaningful question, why I'm here? Um, I must achieve something bigger than myself. So they look for spiritual religion and what other other philosophical path or 
spiritual path or any other path that people like to see or different work or humanitarian work. But you can see that that, that particular of radiant is actually radiant from our nature. That's why our habit of human mind is always doing things uh, normally, normal things. But then time to time, our nature radiant, you know, like a reflection and reminds ourselves that is not actually why we're here. We need to reconnect and see our nature is pure. So that I think uh, is uh, uh, why we ask the question. I really think this is the radiant or a reflection or, you know, of the nature. Now, am I enough or... Uh, 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 or other question you can say something anything the base of uh, I can be enough uh, am I doing uh, something good why did not treat me well this kind of a lot of question base this kind of questions that comes I feel like it's more the ego base that it's a very the most challenging that I see is Pride and dignity is so close, so so easy to mistake in each other. Likewise, uh, you know our judgment and noticing is so easy to uh, uh, easily to mistake in each other. Uh, same thing like now the two questions that I bring up: Am I enough? Is actually arising from ego. When you have this dignity, you're not going to ask a question about, am I enough? Because you already feel completely um, satisfied within yourself, whether you do something or you, whether you don't do something. I, I realized that w w when you don't have no dignity or reconnected dignity, what happened is we are uh, urge, hungry, hunger, urge to uh, love, attention, praise um, and this kind of you know externally um, intention and externally love externally care is so much needed because you know that we don't uh, connect it to our own dignity our whole noble heart that's a we feel empty empty inside I feel this is actually is a giving us sign you know, like reflection, like radiant, our own nature telling us that actually we really, really connected to our own um, dignity. So the two questions is very much similar sometimes. One is based in arising from the ego. One is question is reflection arising from nature. So it's a very similar, a very too easy to mistaken. Thank you. So I had written a question that I think you just answered. We might think that dignity requires a strong ego, yet we work to reduce ego because it's an obstacle to our true nature. So my question is, how does ego relate to dignity? Mm. And it seems as an impediment to reconnecting with our mm. dignity. You can see the ego negative way, or you can see the ego is like, a, um, um, the best example is, I don't have no permanent job, but I need to do some earning because I have so much money to spend in every day. So I, I do part-time job. So part-time job is not really what I want. I want full-time job, you know, that I have so many benefits like insurance and um, family plannings and holidays and, you know, this kind of all the benefits that I want, but part-time job that I don't get all the benefits and the payment pay is a little bit low. So I find these two examples is actually, we actually looking for dignity. Whole being, I really, really, I really see that we're looking for dignity, but we don't know how to find it. So what choice we have to part-time job is then ego is only left. 
So ego is actually like not really bad as a ego, you know, ego self is not a bad. Ego is something that we need to uh, have it. We use that ego because we don't know how to reconnect to, to, uh, to dignity. So that, then the, the problem with the ego comes is ego is empty, it's fragile. Um, ego is uh, very judgmental. Ego produces judgmental. Ego is fragile. Looks very much strong, uh, steady, but it's not steady at all. Um, ego is all very hungry. Ego is very much hunger for love um, and uh, attention and uh, caring. Unconditional love is so much ego one because ego itself doesn't have unconditional love. Dignity is inherently unconditional love. Dignity inherently have unconditional compassion. Dignity have unconditional uh, openness. So that's why ego, we use the ego because we don't want to uh, use ego, but we don't know how to reconnect to dignity. That's why we look, for, we use part-time job, you know, to survive. That is the, that is the ego, and the ego becomes a defended, defensive tool we use is pride. So um, part-time job is not really worthwhile. I think we all know this example because it's not good to be fit all family comfortably. We always need something and we always concerned. Part-time job uh, is not really the way, but the full-time job, we don't know. We don't know how to find it correctly. So that I think is a very good example. We really need to reconnect back to full-time job. That is the our dignity. So then when, what you have, all the benefit comes automatically. Unconditional love comes. When you have unconditional love within nature, then you don't need unconditional love from someone. You always become yourself is become unconditional loving to others. So that is what is goes in around and comes around because we don't have unconditional compassion, but we want unconditional compassion to ourselves, to somebody to do us for us, but we don't know how to do for others. And it doesn't go around. So that is what I found that, um, you know, uh, ego is not really bad as his way, but ego is the only only way that we, we know, you know. It gets survive. you by with the part-time job. Exactly. Until you, you realize no that choice. you need more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I like that. So my next question is about the unshakable. Let me say that differently. Is it necessary for true dignity to be unshakable? Like for that full-time job to be unshakable? Also recognizing that impermanence is the truth for everything. So how can we have, is it necessary for true dignity to be unshakable? Mm. Mm. So that uh, they have two kinds of understanding in here that we need to understand that what I'm talking about dignity is not a feeling. It's not a, only it's feeling. It's not a belief. It's not a theory. It's not a philosophy. What I'm saying right now, the dignity is what we really are. Without me telling you, without book, without philosophy, without belief, without idea, whether it's a definition by me or anyone, the your core nature is actually pure, right? So that is not philosophy, that is a nature. For example, when you hold a, a water, with a little bit mixed with the soil. When your water is shaken, then the soils go around in the water, the liquid, the liquid become unclean, not so clean to drink. So right now what happened is, what is the way to solve that is you need to hold the water. You don't shake the water, just leave it for five minutes. All the heavy dust, the mud, the clay, it goes you know, down to the bottom. Then upper the water it naturally is the pure, then it could remain pure. So the only way to see the clear clearness, the cleanness of the water is don't shake the water, the cup, the vessel. So I don't know this example you all understand, but you understand that means the water is actually us. The whole vessel is us. Okay. 
we shaking. Shaking is our mind, thinking, believing, doing things, always going around emotionally, not emotionally, you know, philosophical opinion, always going around. That's why we are always shaken. So we need to calm down the mind through meditation, through breathing exercise, through yoga, normal running exercise, whatever. When your mind is a little calm, then the mind becomes more clearer, more purer, because mind is naturally pure. Mm -hmm. So that's why that particular, I think, is very important to understand. And that particular dignity is not created by you and me. It's naturally pure. That means it's always it's very steady. It's, it's naturally it's very steady, unshakable, because it's uncreated. It's always very strong by itself. The question comes is, Rinpoche, I, right now, Rinpoche, you talk about dignity. I can sense my dignity time to time, but it doesn't stay long because you trust more your ego and your affliction of mind than your own nature. You believe in your ego because your ego and mind is something that you always with you, you with you, and you are so much habit, 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 habit habituate that action. So it's very difficult. Seems like your, your dignity is not stable. But actually, no. Your mind is not stable. That's why. So when mind is, comes down, the dignity presence is by itself, naturally. You don't need to do anything else. Mm. So that's why dignity itself is very strong, very steady, and unshakable. Thank you. I think that really answered my next question, which was thinking about real life situations where the stable quality of our dignity may be threatened. And so mm -hmm. meditating, going for a run, breath work, doing what we need to do to hold mm -hmm. that vessel to allow the water to settle mm -hmm. is yes. your suggestion. Mm -hmm. The only way, uh, the biggest rubber and the biggest thief of your own dignity is your own mind. No one can rob your dignity. No one can steal our dignity. No one actually can give us the dignity. You know, it feels like that actually, but it's not. The dignity is inherent, but our mind regaining a trust towards ourselves. That feels like I'm receiving a dignity. I gained the dignity. I somebody gave me back my dignity. Somebody stole my dignity. Somebody revived my dignity. That all expression, because you are so much trust into the mind creation, but you don't trust at all what is inherent. So awakening dignity is the what we suggesting is please go back to what, what is inherent. Go into that thinking. Contemplate that, you know, again, some trust in that more than your mind need to create the dignity. When the mind need to create the dignity, I guarantee you that dignity is actually combined, is actually ego and is very fragile. And somebody can uh, say some opinion or uh, somebody create some situation, you can lose the ground easily like that, like a finger snap and you're going to break down. And that shows very clearly that that dignity that you thought that you have it, or I have it, but that is not dignity that we're talking about. So it's a very important, it's very subtle. It's not really easy to understand, honestly speaking. It's not that, you know, you really need to um, read the book a few times, contemplate, listen the book, you know, audio talk, not every day, just few pages listen, contemplate, because mind really need time to adjust and digest and reflect and, and understand because it seems like I completely forgot about that in our society. Nobody talk about that, very few. It's not in our culture. It's not in our expression. It's not in our music. It's not in our art. It's not in our education. It's not in our saying and slangs. So you can see it's so culture is so mixed mix out, mix out of that nature. 
So that's why reconnecting back with a different way, music, art, expression, like a mirror that I mentioned, um, the part-time job and you know the full-time job is not the best example, but that is, I think we can understand it partially. So this kind of things to reconnect back is, I think is very important for, especially for the children, teenagers, because they are the future, next generation, is they are the next uh, human kind. They need to produce a uh, third generation of the human beings. So for, we have responsibility, not just for ourselves, we have the responsibility for our kids and their kids. That makes me think about the relationship between compassion and dignity. Hmm. There's a really lovely story in the book about compassion and wisdom with a bird. I believe it's one wing is wisdom and the other compassion and hmm. dignity being the power that helps the bird hmm. fly. Hmm. Can you tell us more about the relationship between compassion hmm. and dignity, please? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I think many of us know compassion as a, a sympathy and uh, empathy. That is what we know you know, in these days, in mostly our culture. But compassion actually, actually is beyond, uh, is a starting from, is sympathy and empathy, but compassion actually means you completely detach of the result of empathy. You have empathy, you have sympathy for others, but you have a wish to, uh, the, the person, the being, to be free from the suffering, or the, whatever the problem going through and the cause of suffering. But equally, and on top of that, I don't have no uh, attached to any result of having compassion or having empathy or having sympathy, like as hero mentality, uh, compassion of hero mentality, compassion of savior mentality, um, compassion to fix everything by you. You know, that compassion is uh, not really compassion. That compassion is actually mixed with your own pride. And that's why a lot of people who does compassion work, you know, or a charitable work is so tiring and so observing, so uh, fatigue. And these days we are used work called compassion fatigue. And I don't like to use the word compassion fatigue because compassion does not have fatigue. Ego has a fatigue. So, the compassion is a, such a, a pure word, okay? Now you put fatigue there that we come, our mind confused of what this compassion means now. So that's why I don't like to use this word called compassion fatigue. I like to say yeah, I do charity and I have good you know, intention and I'm, I'm tired. And you can call, I think, something else, but I don't like to use the word compassion because when you have dignity, the compassion arises automatically. When you are completely safe, you are completely, how you say, uh, content, content that you what you have. You don't have nothing to lose, but you're completely content. You completely, you can say, realize, or you can completely, you have some nothing to lose then your compassion have nothing to gain. Your compassion is just for all others, completely. You don't want to gain um, favor. You don't want to gain feeling, good feeling after the compassion. You don't want to save other people to feel savior. You don't want to be save other because you feel a hero. Whether you do something, people have praised you. You don't really, really attach to that. All this weakness of our action doing good for others because we don't really understand dignity and the quality of compassion correctly. That's why we're having this issue that in uh, these days, you know, we call compassion fatigues. The connection of that is co compassion is expression. The real answer for you, I think compassion is expression of your own nature, the dignity. Your, when you understand and reconnect with your dignity, compassion express naturally, purely. So you can, that there are two ways. 
you reconnect back to a dignity, then you increase your compassion. That is one way. Another way is you're increasing the compassion. First, you have sympathy and you train the sympathy to become compassion and no hero mentality, savior mentality, fixer mentality. Then the compassion actually helps us to reconnect back to our dignity. So the, this goes both ways. Like a highway, one way goes and up, one way goes to the down in a one freeway. It's like that. So it goes, it goes both way. <laughs> Thank you. How would you say dignity relates to enlightenment? If meditation is how we're training for compassion and dignity, what might you say about people who are working towards enlightenment? How does dignity relate? The word of enlightenment is a very uh, beautiful word, but it's a very vague. vague. Mm. Because that's why we want to make <clears throat> the word of enlightenment very beautiful, <clears throat> meaningful, but a vague. Because people to ask the question, so we can explain. Enlightenment actually means uh, free uh, from wanting to be something, or want, uh, you have fe fear to not to become. Basically, to become somebody, someone, or fear that I'm not, to be, not going to become that way. That fear comes because you do not know our inherently this nature is pure. So one way to say, going to finding the dignity, meditation, reconnect back to dignity, is actually is one way of enlightenment. Because enlightenment is means free from um, to become and free from not to become, worried about not to become. So na naturally is inherently, naturally enlightened, inherently, naturally is pure that I'm mentioning. It's actually the same meaning of enlightenment. So reconnect back to dignity is one way for enlightenment. Thank you. Is is it clear? Is you think is it clear? I had a really good glimpse in there, and okay. it, I think it's, I think it's clear. I'm okay. I'm actually listening to you, thinking I can't wait to listen to this again and and go back to that and spend some time. Um, what comes to my mind is that enlightenment really is our true unshakable pure dignity and exactly. resting in it yes that's it mm -hmm. before we open up to audience questions Rinpoche I think it's important to discuss the difference of training and practice mm. um you know in in my world as a skier um it, if I only had intellectual knowledge of how to ski a big mountain, it certainly wouldn't be enough, right? That I have to apply my experiences um, in order to make good decisions. Mm. And I think that's an important point to have you explain mm. about training and practice. Mm. So... <clears throat> In, we have a saying in the, our traditional meditation uh, uh, tradition. We say, first, you need to understand correctly, meaning you need to understand what is it. You need to contemplate, meaning you need to meditate. Then you need to behave or you need to act that way. So they have three steps. So understanding and uh, you know uh, contemplating and meditation is actually called training i like to call this as a training so when you listening um, uh, awakening dignity book or reading a book and slowly you're meditating the exercise and doing the exercise and doing the meditation you are actually not practicing dignity you're actually training your mind to be understand reconnect back to the dignity now when is become practice meaning 
when you're behaving, so when you're going to the sort of normal life, you know, going to work, uh, dealing with family, dealing with friends, dealing with the colleagues and other um, partners or um, companions or any others that you rule. And when you're doing action, when you're in the society, at that time, you can see very clearly that what you understood, what you contemplate, what you meditate, am I um, reflecting, am I shining uh, when you, you know, whatever you have dignity, do I, you know, having the uh, uh, reflecting that dignity or you reflecting out your pride. So that is the call um, uh, behavior, the conduct. And action. So the action is actually practice. So what you need is training is what you need to focus, uh, you know, contemplation, understanding, meditation, all that. But when you're behaving in a society, that is actually called practice. So many of our uh, idea is when you do the meditation, we always say, I'm practicing meditation. And I always tell people, you are not practicing meditation, you are training the meditation. If you practice, you must be in the society. How your mind is, mind is settled or mind is not settled, your mind is judgmental or mind is not judgmental. That is very important to see. This is how I define separately. It can be a little tricky for many people. So you need to be more, um, you need to do at least one month this way. So you're reminding yourself every day, then you become more natural with that. Um, in our talk today, I haven't heard you yet use words I heard you use often, which is check, check, check. <laughs> Do you, would you apply that check? Myself after, every day. Maybe if oh, you yes. do every day. Yeah. Every day I do. I do reflection. I check and reflection. I reflect myself, uh, how I speak, how I am. Uh, and first I check my behaviors, my physical behavior, my verbal behavior, basically my behavior I check. Then I go deeper, my intention. Yeah, so first I check my behavior, then I check my intention. Uh -huh. and yeah, this is how I do check because many of us, first we have very good behavior, so our intention is not good. And uh, some people have very good intention, but behavior is really bad. So you need to really need to be... Uh, you know, coordinate this too. You know, intention must be good, but behavior must be shined through that what you intended. So that need to be coordinated. And through the coordination, you need to check and reflect. Without that, you don't know how to coordinate. <laughs> I can certainly keep going. I have many more questions. I'm aware of the time. I'm not sure. Rachel, would you like us to transition to audience yes. Q&A? We do have some audience questions and not a ton of time left. So I think we should okay. switch to some audience okay. questions. Well, um, and I, I will let you take those, run with them then. Thank you so much, Rinpoche. So audience, if you have additional questions, you can put them into the in the Q&A box. I'll get to as many audience questions as I can. Um, the first one we have is a great one that came from Josh. Um, he says, I teach in a prison setting how can I help incarcerated individuals to develop dignity in such difficult circumstances? Everybody's different to reconnect back to the dignity. You need to find a way. Some people can find through experience. Uh, some people uh, find uh, empathy, sympathy. Some people can understand through meditation. Um, someone can be through, under, you know, like directly, like what I, how I speak, your nature is pure, but your behavior can be bad, you know, that way, you know, reconnect. So it's not one way to uh, find, uh, reconnect back to dignity. You need to use many different way because human beings have a different way to reconnect back. But the, what we connect it to is a dignity itself. So that's why you need to find a way. And you, when you keep doing uh correctly and especially you need to meditate josh when you do um prison work you must reconnect yourself towards intention uh, check your intention check your behavior and you when you do sincerely uh, meditation well uh, you're going to have a lot of natural tools going to appear in your mind in the right way when your mirror you are like a mirror when your mirror is clean anyone comes to you 
they see their face cleaner. But you are mirror a little bit dusty, and anyone comes there, they're not going to see correctly. So that's why it's very important to your own meditation. Thank you. Um, Megan would like to know, know, do you believe that we are our own gods in a sense? Um, the idea of God, I don't know what you're really thinking about God, but uh, when I you saying that God is a pure the nature like that, then yes, of course. But then you're talking about the creation, the creator, that kind of God, I think is a very uh, a tough place to be explained that way. So what I'm trying to say right now is... Uh, Dignity is a pure nature, uncorrupted by um, our behavior, our bad action, uh, uncorrupted by other, uncorrupted by you. It's not created by anyone, not you. So it's a very naturally presence. And that, I think, is the most important to understand takeaway. Hmm? Lovely. Um, there's a wonderful question here from Jamie asking, how would you suggest teaching children about their innate dignity? Mm. I like to use examples with my uh, children because it's very important to say, you know, the mirror example is very easy to understand. And I use this and children are very important to explain your nature is pure because when they grow up like teenagers, then uh, they go to go into more difficult life. So that's what we really need to uh, make them understand that you are inherently is compassionate, you inherently is calm, inherently you are dignity, dignity you know, have dignity qualities, inherently you are untouched by all the negativity. That example by a sky, completely of a blue sky, mm, and you have raining and storm, but after that, it's not going to be damaged the sky. Sky is always clean. That is one way. Uh, one is a mirror. I like to use examples a lot of time. Mirror is very easy to understand. So I like to use example to the kids to understand. Thank you so much. Um, we are unfortunately just about out of time. So we're going to wrap up with one more question from Josh. Um, he asks, how does dignity manifest in our behavior? And what specific meditation practices do you recommend to cultivate dignity? Mm, they have many different ways to do meditation. That's why the Awakening Dignity book is there, because I cannot explain all of that now. You have different types of meditation you need it, because uh, it's not one way to be, uh, the one way is the best way. You need to use different ways. For example, when I make a, um, mm, a dish called a pasta, so just having a noodle is not enough. You need to have noodle, water, garlic, tomato sauce, cheese. You need to have different types of uh, spices. So different things you need to mix together to make a very delicious pasta, isn't it? Like that reaching, recognizing dignity is not one way. You need to use different ways, compassion, a um, little bit of uh, letting go of things, uh, meditation, different techniques to find the dignity. And uh, in the, in the uh, second part of the answer is when you do the dignity, dignity is not vulnerable at all. Uh, dignity doesn't take personally easily. Dignity, you don't lose right away. When you give opinion to somebody, your ego is not touched with opinion, your opinion. Somebody not listening to your um, advice, you don't feel any bad. But when you advise somebody, you feel bad means you actually ego is attached with that. Secondly, uh, somebody criticizes you, you don't take personally when you have dignity. And normally we all take personally because we have pride. Mm, dignity is very steady, and pride is very unsteady. Mm, and the dignity doesn't really judge fast. Dignity just, you notice things, but the pride is constantly judging. And that's why it's a very big difference in, 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 when you do the action and the work. Rinpoche, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful evening. Kit, thank you for your thoughtful and lovely questions. Thank you, um, Kit. Thank you, all of you. Thank, thank you, you Rinpoche. Much. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks to everybody. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you soon here thank in you. Jackson.
Audience, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You can find Awakening Dignity at, and other upcoming Northshire events at northshire.com. Thank you so much and have a lovely evening, everyone.